In part one, we reviewed my previous failed attempts at making mosaic before stacking and tacking, as they say, a bunch of 1084 and 15 and 20 steel that we forge welded together and manipulated by rotating it, pressing it, cutting it into pieces, and rewelding it together. Then ended up with our final bar, which we cut into tiles at an angle, and we carefully arranged those tiles before forge welding them together to bring our pattern to the surface in a repeating fashion. We ground our blade to shape, thermal cycled it, and left off after quenching. So buckle up, things are about to get crazy here. Let's see if we can steer this ship home because the waters are about to chop. I swab the poop deck, it's getting choppy. Our knife is tempered at 390 degrees and hardness checked before the bevels are ground in. We're not gonna get too attached to our knife yet because a quick dip in the ferric chloride reveals some problems. What are those bright lines? I think there's three possibilities. The first is delaminations where these just aren't really good welds and they're they're bright and they're open. I don't think that's the case. It's a solid piece of steel. The next option is that even though we welded in a canister, our billet didn't go all the way to the sides. There's area in here for oxygen, right? Just a small amount of oxygen. Maybe that oxygen creeps into the areas, uh, our welds here, and causes iron oxides to form, which then weld up in the canister but are bright etching. We put paper in here to eat up all the oxygen and even if that paper weren't there I don't think there's really enough oxygen to do anything like that. I've welded in canisters a lot that doesn't seem feasible. I talked with Joshua Prince, master of Damascus. I think I agree with him basically. When we have let's say our four-way welds here these pieces have been in the forge a long time and they build up scale on the outside right? And that scale is sort of black and it's iron oxide and we can grind it off, but even underneath that scale, there's a layer of decarb steel. It's, it's um, decarbonated, it has less carbon. That carbon gasifies and leaches out of the steel. Essentially, this layer is iron or mild steel. It has less carbon than high carbon steel, and it doesn't etch, it just stays white. So if you don't grind all of this off, you have a, a tiny layer of it on all your welding surfaces. And um, even though you've ground off the black oxide, there's still this layer of decarb steel. And that etches bright when you put it together. Even though it's a very thin line, you put two sides together and it, it shows up. Let's see if we can fix this. Perhaps we can put carbon back into those bright areas and make normal etching high carbon steel out of them. At very high temperatures, carbon migrates down its concentration gradient in steel, so we may be able to move enough from the surrounding high carbon steel into our decarb areas that the bright lines go away. We're going to seal it in steel foil with some graphite, which is carbon and paper to help prevent leaching of carbon out of the steel from oxygen, and bake it in our oven at 1800 degrees for three hours to see what happens. Yeah, that's a bummer. No joy on that. Let's try again, though, at a higher temperature for a longer period. I've sealed the knife with some paper towels in this 1 16th inch thick steel tube. It stands up to 2,000 degrees for three hours, much better than our steel foil wood. Let's take a peek. Isn't that pretty? It's sort of like color case hardening. I think it's a similar process. So I'm going to get it cleaned up and etch it, and we'll see... Those white lines are still there. If anything, they're probably black lines. So I don't know if you can see it. There's still a silver line, a hint of a silver line there. The rest of these lines did turn black, though. The blade was normalized at 1600, then 1550, then 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, then quenched from 1490 degrees and ground it down further before checking it in our ferric chloride. Yeah, that's not great. So no one on YouTube posts more negativity than Russians. If you're Russian, I invite you to leave those comments now. I'll allow two each. Well, this poop deck was thoroughly swabbed. Let's start over. In the interest of time, the initial forging will happen off camera. We'll just check in at the workbench between welds. Although our initial billet is going to be laid out a little differently, we're going to follow the same pattern development scheme in the first video. But for the first step, 
things will look a little different and we're not going to do our final four-way weld. This is our initial bar. We've made some vertical lines in it. We're going to work this bar into our initial mosaic billet here. There's more of them this time around. It should be a more interesting pattern. Got a surface ground and I've etched it. Maybe a little bit of decarb there or some weld or something. The rest of the side looks pretty good. There is some decarb here. You can see that bright etching. So I'll either put that face, you know, down or on the top of the next billet. Well, I, can't, I won't be able to do that. I'm gonna have to grind that cleaner. You have to grind that cleaner. At any rate, for the most part, you can't see any decarb. Can't see the lines, can you, Russ? We cut up that last piece now into four pieces. We're gonna weld these together, but add some more bits on either side to alter the pattern and give us more material. So it was squared, manipulated, and drawn out to prepare for the four-way weld. Perfect, that looks great. Very clean, we should be able to avoid the issues we had with our last knife. I use quite a bit of Starbond, guys. They have really good packaging and really good applicators. Check the link in the description. They're running a 30% off campaign right now. It is an affiliate link. I get paid if you use it. By the way, this is the only canister I've used so far with this knife, and it's gone well. I've lost a lot of material more than usual, but so far the welds look good. So this is our final billet. This is it. How are we going to cut it up for our tile welds? Well, I've done some calculations. Let me show you. We want to take what's on the end of our billet and repeat it multiple times across the length using the fairy flip tile weld method. See the last video for more info. But here's the deal. If what's on end is perfectly square, then what we get when we cut the billet on an angle is actually an elongated version of our pattern. How elongated depends on this angle right here, the angle of our cut. To make a square, the purple and the green lines have to be equal, obviously. To remain a square after our angled cut, the length of the purple and the blue line will have to be equal. But how can this happen? Well, we can't start with a square billet or face. We have to start with one that has been compressed into a rectangle. So if we want to cut a 35 degree angle, the dimensions of our billet have to correspond. If our billet is too tall, our 35 degree angle will yield a tall rectangle instead of a square. If the billet is too short, it'll make a rectangle that's wider than tall instead of a square. So how do we find the dimensions of our starting billet that will allow, for example, a 35 degree angle to yield a square face where the purple and blue lines are the same length? The key is in these green lines in the right angle triangle equation. All of the green lines are the same length, so we can make a triangle out of the side of our billet and use calculations there. The length of the blue line is known. It is the same as the length of the purple line, the bottom of the face of our billet. Let's say 1.6 inches. As long as these two lines end up equal, our face will be square. So how long does our green line or height of our billet have to be with a 35 degree angle? By using the right angle calculator on Google, we know it must equal 0.92 inches. So to get a non-distorted square face after our angled cut of 35 degrees, the height of our billet must be 0.92 inches if the width is 1.6 inches. The dimensions must be forged accordingly, not ground, forged. I came at this with a specific angle I wanted to use. You could know your billet dimensions and calculate the angle needed. It's just that most people use an angle between 30 to 40 degrees for this method of tile welding, so that's where I started. Now, if one is planning on drawing out the resulting billet, elongating it with forging, then you would want to start with a squashed version of your pattern here, and you would plan accordingly by reducing the height of the billet below what is required to make a square face on the fairy flip. 
One more factor. How long is your billet? Mine's sort of short, so 35 degrees is going to give me about three tiles. So I went to 42 degrees. I'm going to get five tiles now. I think that's much more approachable. I made them a little thinner than I like too, unfortunately, but that's just what it takes with such a small amount of material. Since I forged to a 35 degree angle, my dimensions, my pattern is going to be a little shorter and squatter. I'm going to, I'm, I can draw it out and that's going to help a little bit, but as you can see here right now, it's a little bit squat, squished together. Back into a canister for the final weld. This is interesting, this canister burps. I've never noticed that before. I've always assumed my canisters have microscopic holes in them because my welding is so bad. So it may, you know, just so you know, not everyone thinks it's safe to fully weld up airtight a canister because of the heat and expansion of air and explosions. P.S. Ameribraid makes awesome grinders here in the USA. I think they're the most bang for your buck anywhere. This isn't a sponsored video. I just wanted to drop that in. This is hand sanded to a thousand grit. Then we'll take a quick peek at our pattern before starting on the guard. We're not going to do our final etching right now because we've got some fit up. So far that looks great. I'm going to stop here though with the etching until we get the guard fitted up. And then we'll continue the finish here and work on our handle after that. My drill vise is pretty unreliable. It needs to be replaced. It locked this in at a slight angle and the drill bit got a little too close to the tang hole as a result by the time it got to the top piece of the guard. So I have to refashion another. Let's finish here and prepare for a third installment where we finish this thing up. Thanks for checking this out guys. Have a good one.